hello to the chicos and the chicas uh, yesterday maybe even the day before actually i had a tremendously awesome day and the reason for that is because the following thing happened on stream as i was playing a game one of my very enthusiastic followers actually typed up a message saying oi coach guess what happened I defeated Nodirbak Abdusatarov with your 1D4 beginner's repertoire. And I'm like, what did you just say? 2700 GM and you just went boomski boomski? Turns out, yes. Um, Lifetime, his name is, uh, played in a online simultaneous against uh, Nodirbak and he actually beat him. And guess what? You are going to see that game right now. But before I get into the game, I would like to credit uh, Lifetime42, that's his name once again on Twitch, for being very, very humble and uh, providing additional information to give a bit of a context about his victory against the Olympic champion uh, teenager prodigy. And the context is, is that this was an online simultaneous, which according to uh, Lifetime may not have been... Um, you know, a perfect environment to play on for uh, Nodirbak. Additionally to that, there was a Grandmaster, a couple of IMs, a couple of FMs and a couple of NMs playing amongst the 27 challengers. And so he said that he thought that uh, probably Nodirbak's attention was uh, directed towards those boards and he was sort of flying under the radar. And uh, when Nodirbak noticed that there was another game here that uh, might prove actually to be quite a bit of a difficulty to win, by then it was too late. But let's let's jump right into it. It's, it is some some delicious stuff. So let's let's go ahead and uh, see what happened in the game. So lifetime in the white trunks, Nodirbak up the Sator of 2700 Grandmaster in the black trunks, and the opening is going to be the Queen's Gambit accepted against which my d4 beginner's repertoire recommends the extremely ambitious and aggressive e4 sacking the pawn and progressing in the center these types of tar structures actually come up a fair bit in my course um you can find variations in the queen's gambit accepted uh, in the slav and in the semi-slav as well where we play similar pawn sacrificing ideas in order to grab the initiative and grab the attack a4 bishop b7 and boy, oh boy, here comes uh, uh, the real beauty. Um, in some ways, in my opinion, the decisive move of the game, which of course is a very thematic and typical push, by the way, in these positions, in these types of uh, structures where the bishop abandons this diagonal without playing e6 first. And that is, of course, the extremely destructive e6 push. Now, to be fair, my opening repertoire goes with knight takes takes and then bishop b7, which is actually slightly more accurate for black. And uh, without further ado, I just would like to mention here too that e6 is the best move. And after f6, bishop e2 and queen d5, not only the course, but in the course, uh, the game section, the simple game section has a masterpiece in there played by Danny Gormley against... Um, Julio Grande Zuniga um, from Peru, an absolute kryptonite of a chess game, that one is. Uh, and of course, those games, which serve the purpose of um, anchor games, by the way, in my repertoire course, support the understanding of these variations really well. So Lifetime, of course, uncocked E6 like a champion. And after, whoopsie, there is wrong button. Uh, after F6, Knight E4 came, and that is the reason why Knight takes C3 needs to be inserted because now knight c5 is going to hurt. Oh, g6 was played. Knight c5, bishop c8, a takes b5, and that is it. It is carnage. It is game over. Uh, at this time, it is already pretty much time to call it on your bike. Um, that's how easily it can go. And I, I'm not saying that uh, this is because my course is so awesome, but this line in particular definitely has the potential um, for you to earn a couple of easy knockout victories. I would have never seen it to be done against the 2700 GM, but to be fair to Nodir Bekab the Satorov, this was an online um, simultaneous. By the way, forgot to mention our friend in the White Trunks lifetime um, sports a rating of 2100-ish. Uh, on dot com. Um, bishop g7, bishop takes c4. We are mopping up the whole board. Knight b6. And here we actually missed a very clean 
and quite nice win by taking yet another pawn, allowing knight c4. But this is, of course, a textbook uh, motif that we see in quite a fair number of d4 openings. Queen a4 check, c6. And when the queen captures on c4, it actually defends both a6 and e6 pawns. And black is absolutely paralyzed. The back rank fest is just absolutely terrifying, really, to play like this with the black pieces. Unfortunately, instead, we pulled the bishop back. Still good enough for a win, but slightly inaccurate. And then after take, take, bishop takes b5, the back rank fest is still on, uh, which is almost always a textbook example and a, a way to demonstrate that something has gone really, really, really bad. Like, it doesn't matter if you are a 1700 club level player or a 2700 rated super GM who is uh, an Olympic champion, when you have got pieces like this, it ain't gonna cut it. And uh, lifetime converts really, really nicely. Bishop f4, 95, pulls the bishop back. The bishop is a monster on that diagonal. c6 pulls the other bishop back. Now the b8 knight is hanging for free. Queen b6, queen e2, knight b4. And here we missed a, a forced win by knight d7. But to the credit of our friend and protagonist, bishop takes b8, which was played, followed by knight d7, is almost as good and also does win by force. I really like the mop-up, by the way. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight e5 and queen e6 check, really adding insult to injury, uh, picking of the c6 pawn, which is the cornerstone of uh, the knight on d5. And now the knight becomes loose and white just goes back and grabs the e7 pawn. And with that, the game as well. Poor not here back here played knight b7, but after the um, very awesome d8 queen, he decided to resign. The only way to stay in the game would be to take with the queen, but that loses another piece, and technically that means that we are not really staying in the game. An absolute masterpiece played by Lifetime42 against uh, a really, really highly esteemed uh, and extremely talented young Super GM. So that is the power of the beginners 1d4, which I shall link um, in the description of this video, as well as the PGN of this game. Please remember this e6 motif. This is an absolute kryptonite. If you get to play this in any opening when e6 hasn't been played, that usually does tremendous damage. Another opening where it occurs fairly frequently, by the way, is the Alekhine's defense. Now, sometimes things can go sideways there very quickly too. And there are some Alapin Sicilians where this is a motif, so keep that one in mind. Kudos to Lifetime42, both for winning the game, but also for being very humble and grounded about it and, you know, not overestimating the value of that victory. I really liked that take and uh, kudos to him for acknowledging uh, all the circumstances that, you know, may have favored him uh, in the simultaneous. Nonetheless, an epic victory. Even I would be very proud of defeating Nodir back in a simul. So kudos to you, brother. I'm very proud of the fact that I was part of this victory by the 1D4 course. And in fact, I was encouraged to publish more of uh, uh, more games of my own that I played on the back of my courses, um, in the meaning the openings of those courses. So I'm going to actually do a few more of those. So please stay tuned because I will be back with more very soon. Please don't forget to sub, to comment, to like, and to super like. And uh, I am going to be back with the next video soon. Thanks for watching.